Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. And if you're unfamiliar with how the Tech Clinic works, you submit your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech and I answer them. So let's dive in with our first question this week, which comes from James Liu, who asks, is wearing a mask whilst cycling safe? Yeah, it is safe to wear a mask while cycling, providing it looks like this and not like this. It's good to wear a face mask if you're cycling in particularly polluted, busy city areas, and as it can stop you breathing in harmful pollutants and make your cycling that little bit safer. It is important to note though, if you're gonna wear a face mask, get one that covers your nose adequately, otherwise you might end up with steamed up glasses. Next in, we've got Nate Duffy who asks, are there any manufacturers or dealers stickers that are important to keep on a new bike? I prefer to take them all off for a cleaner look and save one gram, of course. Also, do you have any tips for removing them safely from a carbon frame with a matte finish? And the stickers that are on your frame are normally intended to be left on there. Sometimes the size sticker can easily be removed, so that's definitely one you can remove. And that will come off just with your fingers, basically. I wouldn't worry about using any strong chemicals or solvents to remove that. That should come off nice and easily. The UCI sticker, normally that's intended to be left on there as a sort of seal of approval that is past the UCI regulations. So I wouldn't try and take that one off in a hurry. And also, it's important to make sure you don't inadvertently remove the serial number from your bike, because quite often those are a sticker underneath your bottom bracket. Normally on a gloss finish frame, most of the stickers are underneath the clear lacquer, but because you've got a matte finish frame, you should be able to remove any easily that you want to. Just be mindful of invalidating your warranty, so check with your bike manufacturer first. Next in, we've got a question from Matthew Yang who asks, Hi GCN Tech, I was wondering if it's okay to run a lower PSI than what it says on the side of my tyre. Usually I ride with 80 PSI on my 28mm tyres, but the lowest PSI rating is 90 PSI. Says he prefers to ride a lower pressure because it feels a little bit more comf comfortable. Is this a bad idea and will it damage the rims? Well, the most important thing to do is to stick to what's recommended with the pressures on the side of your tyres. They're all slightly different, but that is the crucial part. Don't, oh, don't inflate them higher than what the recommended pressure is, and certainly don't run them lower than that. And they're rare for a reason, and that's safety. If you run your tyre pressures too low, you do run a chance of the tyres the coming off the wheels, and you certainly don't want that. The risk of damaging the rim is fairly slim because, well, the, the lower pressure isn't going to damage the rim, but when you run the lower pressure, you do run the risk of hitting the rim if you hit any rocks and stones, so you certainly don't want that. The best advice I could offer is just to stick to what's recommended on the side of the tyre, and I wouldn't go lower than what it says. Next question in is from Dave Vesper. <laughs> so this is a good one, this one. Cheers, Dave. He says, putting the milk in before you take the tea bag out. Oh, dear. And this is obviously one from my bike build over the last weekend. And yeah, I'm not so great at making tea as you can see, so I'll take note of that. Um, okay, our next question in is from Jochen Wins, who asks, what is a safe clearance between the back wheel and the frame? He rides a Cannondale CAD 12 with 28 millimeter tires. And whilst the manufacturer website states this is perfectly possible, his local bike shop looked at it and said he's taken a huge risk with such small clearance between the tire and the frame. What advice should he follow? So running a larger tire than what is recommended on your frame is definitely something to avoid doing. But as you say, the 28 millimeter tire is recommended to be okay by the frame manufacturer. And in terms of the physical gap between the tire and the frame, there isn't really like a set distance that needs to be adhered to. You can run whatever sort of combination that fits in provided the tire doesn't actually hit the frame. But what you do need to be mindful of is any little stones that could be flicked around with the tire and get caught between the tire and the frame itself. That way you do run the risk of those stones damaging not only the paintwork on your frame, but also the frame itself if they were particularly you know, stuck right in there, they could always damage the frame. I've had many frames in the past that have had lots of stone chips and stone marks from stones that have got taken around with the tire and scraped down between the frame. I've never heard of a stone stopping the wheel dead, so I don't think you've got any safety risks with that, but the risk I would be concerned with is damaging your frame. So just be mindful of that. And if it looks like it's closer than sort of 
two to three millimeters, then maybe it might be worth going down a size of your tires. Next in, we've got a question from Cadu Slayers, who asks, can I wear mountain bike shorts for long distance rides on my road bike, or do I have to have specific road ones? And so they don't really find road cycling shorts very comfortable due to the fitting of them. Um, I've never actually heard anyone ask this question, so that is interesting. But the main thing I would say is to use whatever equipment you find comfortable. And if you find mountain bike shorts comfortable, then stick with those. I'm surprised to hear that because road cycling shorts are specifically designed for road cycling. So it might be worth having a little look to see if you could find some road cycling shorts that might fit you a little bit better or be a slightly better quality than what you've tried previously. But at the, if, but at the end of the day, if you're happy with your mountain bike shorts on your road bike, stick with that and make sure you're comfy and enjoy your cycling. And our last question for this week comes from Fabio Salsa. Okay. Says, hi guys, hope you're well. Can I upgrade a mechanical Ultegra group set to a DI2 group set using some of the existing parts? What do you have to change? That definitely is a good question. And yes, you can keep some of the existing parts. Shimano specifically designed a, um, a DI2 shifting group set, which only includes the shifters, the mechs, the parts that you need to make all of your bike operate with a DI2 system. It doesn't include things like the rim brake calipers, the chain set, the chain, the cassette. So that way you can only buy the components that you need. So you're gonna need shifters, for example, all the cables, the battery, the junction boxes, the front and the rear mechs. But also Shimano do sell this in a disc brake upgrade package if you wanted to upgrade to disc brakes too. So you can reuse the components that you've already got and crucially save yourself some money. And that's it for this week's GCN Tech Clinic. Keep your questions coming as always using the hashtag AskGCNTech by commenting down in the section below. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, see ya.